If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode... That one goes in the vault. ...of yeah. Mind Pump, we had... A good friend of ours, Christina Rice. Yeah, we always have a good time with Homegirl. We love her. She's a young lady. She's got two podcasts that she, she does. A smart lady. She's got a blog. She's got a great social media presence. So me and Adam met her a while ago, right? We went down to LA, did some one of our podcasting hard trips. Yeah, it was a good six months plus ago. Super impressed by her. Um, very, very smart girl and super open. And you'll hear in this episode where we interview her, she actually shares some very personal stuff about her journey through wellness and health. Mm -hmm. um, her podcast, she she connects to a younger crowd. So like girls in particular in their maybe 20s or teens. So her message is similar to ours, but a little bit different because of the, the crowd that she's attracting. Mm -hmm. um, but we really like her message. We really like her. So uh, we'd like you to check out her podcast. So her name's Christina Rice. Her blog is addictedtolovely.com. Her podcast, she's got two of them. One of them is Straight Up Paleo, and the other one is Actually Adultish. And you can find her on Instagram at addicted underscore two, that's T-O underscore lovely. So without any further ado, here's Adam, Justin, and myself talking to Christina Rice. So I'm going to ask you a quick question. Without saying Justin or is Adam- Is it really going to be quick? That's a good one. Without- <laughs> She listens to the show. I love, I without love without saying Justin or Adam, who's your favorite Mind Pump host? Without saying Justin. <laughs> Doug. Yes. <laughs> Doug always God, wins. She's smart. Where's Taylor? Who, he's out there. He's, he's, he's doing his little Mysterio stuff. Yeah, he's doing yeah. Mysterio yeah. stuff. He like Wait, magicians you around. You guys never um, gave me feedback about your package. Oh, it was great. Yes, I did. Yeah. You saw my Instagram. Yeah, I saw. Did yeah. you read that book? No, I haven't. It's, I'm reading something else right now, so it's oh. it's on my list though now. You're so, so sweet yeah. that you sent us gifts, and they were all Such thoughtful. Nice, and they were thoughtful gifts. Yeah. I pride myself on being a really good gift giver. Are you yes. really? That's great. The that's toilet paper nice. was horrible at it. That's so very nice of you. Don't, don't expect yeah. reciprocation. So that's okay. Uh, okay. So I want to tell <laughs> I want to tell our audience. We talked about you on one of our episodes, but I'm gonna re I'm gonna talk about it again. Yeah. Thank you. Our experience first meeting you. So me and Adam went down to LA to do one of our podcasting hard trips. This is where we yeah. just go nuts and get on as many podcasts as possible. We just, we just own this. Yeah, this just, hashtag is ours. Just as many as we can do at once. And we were like, all right, we'll take everybody who comes on or whatever. And you were in contact with, uh, I don't know if it was uh, Brianna or Katrina. Katrina to book. And she's like, she talked about you and we're like, yeah, we'll do it. We got time. We can meet this person. She listens to the show. She seems like a fan. Let's do this. So we show up to your apartment mm -hmm. to do the show and, you know, the door opens and it's this real young lady ready to do the podcast. And within 15 minutes, we were so impressed with just how, like you're a little hustler, like you bust <laughs> your ass. And then, and then you were, you were not intimidated to interview these two, you know, grown men in your, in, with a show that yeah. you follow, like you were asking good questions. You weren't necessarily intimidated. It was really cool. You didn't so, seem nervous at all. No, I we mean, had such a good impression. I wasn't. I was really excited. I was nervous that I wasn't going to have enough time, which of course I didn't because I told you I could talk to you guys for 500 hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. But also, I mean, that's the power of a podcast is I feel like I know you and I don't. I mean, I've met you twice, mm -hmm. but I mean, and I'm sure everybody who listens to you feels the same way. Like they feel like they know you. Oh yeah. yeah. And people tell me that, you know, people will come up to me and say, I love your podcast. I listen to your podcast and it, this might seem weird, but I feel like you're my best friend. And I'm like, it's not weird. Yeah. I, if I listen to somebody every single week, you know, for two years, I'd probably you feel, feel like, you like, know them. Yeah. yeah. Well, think about that. We, we talk about this all the time that we, I mean, if you're a listener, if you actually listen to the show almost every day, like there's a, a lot of people that do that. I mean, I'm communicating with you more than I do almost anybody else in my life. Yeah. Like, I don't dedicate two to three hours of just communicating, communicating yeah. to somebody other than on this podcast. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're consuming that at a daily rate, I mean, every other day of our, our show, I mean, shit, I'm basically talking to you more than I'm talking to any friends or family or anybody else. So of course yeah. now, uh, do you find too, like when you, you like shows, you, you, uh, identify with some of the host and stuff. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you identify with, with Justin, Sal, myself, like which parts of each of us do you connect with? <laughs> we like to I hear about ourselves. I think that you guys like just fish for compliments. See, and see, I'm not going to struggle. Call them out on of that. Of course, yes. we are. Of course, we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what? <laughs> she just, I identify She just springboarded right back at you. That was a, the right answer. Yeah. I identify with you guys as a group because, you know, I have the same ultimate goal. I like that you guys are no bullshit. I like that. Mm. I mean, this is something that a lot of people hate about me is that I'm just so straightforward and blunt mm. and I speak my truth, my mind. I stay... I state my opinion and you guys do the same and you have the same ultimate goal of just like getting real health information out there. And that's my goal too. And that you do it in probably the best way I've ever heard anybody else like give that information. That's why I love you guys. Awesome. So, so yeah. you, you have Thank two you. podcasts. You have actually adultish, which you've had now for almost two years. Mm-hmm. You have uh strictly paleo straight up, paleo. straight up, excuse me, straight up paleo. How long has that been on? Like Three months. Three months. You have, you blog. Mm -hmm. How often? Uh, Usually like three times a week. Three times a week. It varies. It used to be every day and I was dying. Okay. So you, now it's less. You're (laughs) posting uh, pictures of foods that you're making that are paleo or healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, Your Instagram, you have, how many Instagram pages do you manage? Is it just one or do you have? Now I'm just doing one. Now you're just doing one with how many followers? Like 18,000. 18,000. You post. 50 Insta stories a day, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Are you counting? Sometimes 100. Yeah. And you're going to school. No, I try to get through all of them. them? Yeah, I've watched, I've watched like the first I'm 10 so and then I'm curious. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like trying to like That's get so through funny. it. So yeah. you you do all this stuff and you go to school. Like how well, do you find the time? I don't go to school. It's well, online. What? Fine. Mm. You're learning something. Where Thank do you it. find the time to do all of this stuff? Like, how do you find all the time to do this? I have no idea. My days are very structured. My days are very scheduled down to like every minute. What does it look like? Wake up in the morning. What do you do? <sighs> okay. Wake up in the morning, rebound for five minutes to get that lymphatic drainage going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oil pull to whiten my teeth, <laughs> clear out the toxins. Do you, do you oil pull every morning? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh shit! You like my yeah. such a biohacker. I like yeah. this. Yeah. Um, no, seriously though. Well, I do those things, but I won't be as detailed. Um, I usually work for like an hour or two. If I'm if I'm working out that day, I'll work out first thing in the morning, um, and then eat breakfast. And then I will see the rest of the day is just either clients or podcasts. Like if I have something scheduled, um, I take a break. I take a break every like two hours or so to like go on a walk. Um, and then I take like a lunch break and then after 7 p.m. I'm doing that all day and then I'm storing when I'm on my walks and checking social media and posting when I'm on like my walks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after the day's done, then I usually eat dinner and then I will just work on my blog or I'll do homework um, until I need to go to bed. Do you go out? Wow. Like, do you go out with friends and stuff? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if You're I- on a mission. I don't really, I mean, mm, no. How do you disconnect then? Like, if you're so, if you're constantly tapped into this and connected- it's, That's like the biggest issue right mm. now is like, I need some space. Like, but if I get a free hour, I want to just like post it on the couch. Veg. Like, I don't want to go out. Are you a Netflix and chiller? Yeah. Yeah. That's What's your favorite Netflix shows right now? Actually, ne- no. I actually hate Netflix right now. Oh, why? it's so dry. What? There's nothing on there. What? There's good stuff. Like what do you like to watch on there? You don't like Stranger Things? Dude, dark. Okay, Stranger Things, but it's done. Dark, yeah. dark. What's dark? Oh, there yeah, you go. See? There what you go. is it? If you like Stranger Things, you'll love it. I'm yeah. super. I'm picky. just into it. If is it like- scary though? No, it's like no, Stranger it's, Things. It's yeah, scary. Very thought, yeah, provoking. Mm. You'll like it. Okay. Oh, like Stranger Things. But I don't like to watch things that are that thought provoking, like on the reg. Because you're trying to because you're trying to Because I don't want to think. You're just uh, trying to really you know, I out. want something that's like... Well, it gets you coming like back, I'll, though, the next day. Sh- <laughs> so give me what you would normally listen. What watch? What, what are, so I, have I an mean, idea your- I'm re-watching Desperate Housewives. Oh, <laughs> so she's really watching mindless stuff. Uh, yeah. Right? Trying to yeah. Show yeah. Up. That's okay. I, I, li- I like 16 and Pregnant. So, so. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah, yeah. The so, reruns. Yeah. So, you're so you're so hardcore with what you're doing. You have a passion, obviously, for it. It's one of the first mm-hmm. things we identified uh, with you, but where did you get that work ethic? Cause you're 22 years old. You're a kid and I haven't met, I don't, uh, the only God, other, I used to hate when I was 22. I know. You keep kid. Calling it. I fucking used to hate <laughs> Well, that. you know why? Old, what were you, what were you guys some doing barnacle, when you were Some barnacle calls me a kid. Tell me, what? tell me what you were doing when you were 22. Being an asshole Same somewhere. thing. I was the same thing. We're all, yeah. I was 19. I was managing gym, 19, so, 20. 
But that's what I'm saying. It was so rare that like none of my friends did that. Like I guarantee you, none of your friends are doing this kind of stuff. They're not. But I think just in in general, people nowadays have to hustle harder. I mean, we're such a fast moving generation Mm -hmm. with technology. Um, But yeah, I mean, a lot of people my age are just, you know, they graduated, they moved back home. There's something wrong with that. But they're also, I think there's a problem when you're sitting on your ass and not trying to figure out what you want to do. And my thing is that I spent so much of my life waiting for like better days. I was so depressed for so long and just like waiting, like, I just got to get through this. I just got to get through high school. I just got to get through college. And then now I'm done with college and I'm like... I am ready to live my best life right now. <laughs> like, I'm not wasting any more time. Like, I mean, there was a time when I didn't know, like, I like literally thought I was going to die at one point. And so after that, I was kind of like every moment mm. now, like, I have to. We got to go back. Yeah, yeah, we got to go back. About you got to go yeah. back. Yeah, because you're obviously passionate about health and wellness for a reason. There's some personal yeah. reasons. Let's yeah. talk about that for a second. Okay. Do you want long version or Go short for it. Version? Whatever. Just, from the beginning. Just tell us. Yeah. This is a podcast. You know, whatever version you want. Everything yeah. we do is long yeah. version. All right. So, okay. So, where do I start? So, my whole life I had really bad digestive issues, but didn't realize, you know, I thought it was normal, so I didn't notice it. Didn't really know it was abnormal until I got to college. Um, and... Now, how did that happen? You were in class and you're farting all the time. Someone's like, hey, that's not normal. No, no. you know what it really was? (laughs) What it really was was when I would spend like weekends with my boyfriend and I'd be like, he'd be like, why do you never poop? And I'd be like, other people poop a lot. (laughs) (laughs) This is a thing. He'd be like, he'd be like, you like don't ever poop. And I'd be like, shit, this isn't normal. Like, you Just had no so idea. Everybody knows. I was like pooping like once a month if I was lucky. Oh, oh my goodness. My God. Shit. Like no. if I was lucky. Like some like usually longer. So you did you wow. were not diagnosed with anything irritable bowel or No, nothing. I mean I thought this was normal. Wow. And like and I was embarrassed of it growing up in you know, I played volleyball like my whole life and mm-hmm. there were so many things I would or and I did dance before that and there were so many things I would skip and I would tell my I would tell my parents I have the flu. I would tell my friends I have the flu and it was really like I was just curled up in a ball on the bathroom floor in pain because I needed to shit and I couldn't. Wow. Oh, wow. Like it was so bad. And And this was when you were in high school? I mean, it was my whole life and it got worse and worse in high school. Yeah, it got worse in high school. Oh, my goodness. And your parents didn't see any of this as a, as a kid or did this start happening when they stopped? You know. Mm. Okay, my family has digestive issues. They just don't care. Oh, mm-hmm. I see. Like, so I learned from a young age, like, it's normal, like, to poop once a week or and it up. hurts yeah. and, it, you know, it's an all day event. And, like, I thought that was how it was for people. I thought wow. people just didn't talk about it. Wow. So you had kind of fascinating. So you had digestive issues Mm -hmm. and you had, and it was always bloated. So like, it was just like the running joke growing up. Like I always looked like I was nine months pregnant, like, and I was just used to it. You know, I I just thought, I don't know. I just thought that was the way it was. And you had mentioned depression and stuff. So you, at the same time you're depressed. So it's obviously contributing to the mental state. Yeah. It was all wrapped up. And I mean, the depression was more like that started really bad at in middle school with like the bullying and shit like that and self-confidence and you know girls are mean boys are mean nowadays and that was also with the rise of texting and the internet and you know people are making websites talking shit about people it was intense like for like sixth graders like the the crap that was going on and so that kind of sixth graders sixth grade oh making websites yeah wow. somebody made we, i'm glad we even, missed all that i literally can't even i look back and i'm like what the fuck like, wow so you're doing this and you're you're, yeah, and, you're, and you're now realizing you know. now you're realizing oh I may have digestive issues. Yeah, I'm like this is kind of like How not did you tackle normal. it? So Okay, at the same time I was just generally depressed with my life because I hated college and I hated everything and I didn't I felt like I've always had this problem where I just always felt like the odd person out like I mean it's hard for me to connect with people my age mm-hmm. honestly like mm-hmm. I don't give a shit about I mean I got to college and my party days were in high school. Like I got to college and I was like, okay, I'm ready to be a grandma. I'm over this. And everybody in college, everybody else in college was like, this is the first time in my life my parents aren't paying attention to me. Like, and they're all excited. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to like 
lay yeah. down. <laughs> I'm, I'm over that. Um, I was just really unhappy and I hated school and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And all this, this turned into binge eating disorder. And so I was just binging really, really Were you purging badly. also or just binging? No. Okay. Um, I was just binging really bad and I was just feeling like a piece of shit. I felt disgusting. And like the binging made my stomach even worse. Right. So it was just a big pile of crap. Like, well, not. Now, now this is you. This is you. A looking, non-moving. Yeah. One. This yeah. is you looking back at yourself and and being able to objectively look at it. But when you're going through it, do you feel it and see it, or do you are you numb to it in a sense? No, I felt it. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. I I just it was not. But still, fuck it. I'm still doing it. Yeah. And there was just one night where I just remember like I was binging and I just I felt so sick and I was like this has to stop and I was like crying like tears streaming down my face I was like hiding in my dorm room like nervous my roommate's gonna come home and catch me like and I'm just like I can't fucking do this anymore so I mean is that when the light bulb went off did you change right right then and there or so the next day it was pretty like I was like I'm gonna pull my shit together like I'm gonna I mean I also at this point sorry there's so many different facets to that's this. all right I yeah, forget about my own life um mm-hmm. so I had I had a chronic case of mono. You'll find this interesting. Like a year and a half of mono. Wow. Yeah. So I had kind of just come off of, you know, I've been really active my whole life. I played volleyball. I did dance. Um, and then so running into college, when I got mono, I, it was like a year and a half of laying on my bed. Wow. And so you like, had severe symptoms of mono. Yeah. Because like, most people, a lot of people don't know this, most people at some point in their life ha, yeah. have been infected with yeah. the mono, mono I, virus. Well, I never got the typical throat thing, but it was the fatigue <clears throat> mm-hmm. and the like the fever. Like it was pretty intense. And like there was a time, like I thought it went away and then it came back. And so I was just feeling like crap because at this point I'm binge eating. I'm depressed. I was just sluggish and gross. I hadn't like moved my body. Like the most movement I was getting was just going to class and then I would come home and just lay down and Mm -hmm. fall asleep um so I had also put on weight like but nothing I mean I'm not the kind of person that really shows when I put on weight like Mm -hmm. I've always been small but so after that binge I just woke up and I'm like I need to pull shit together I was like I want to start exercising eating healthy like I'm not gonna binge anymore and I really did turn it around um but that sort of led me into it started off good I reached out to my cousin and he taught me um, more about fitness. Well, at first I tried the whole cardio thing and that didn't work. Were you just doing tons of cardio? So I just, I, you know, I tried to run the track. I was like, I don't know how to like be in shape without a sport. I realized um, all I knew was like there's a track. So I tried to run. Didn't work. Mm-hmm. Then I tried to go to the elliptical because that's what every other girl was doing. I hated it. And then my cousin was like, you should try lifting weights. And I was like, OK. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so he got me into that. And I loved it. Meanwhile, I was just became obsessed with like learning about nutrition on the Internet, um, not realizing at the time that like the health information wasn't health information. You had to sift through a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. I mean, at the time, I just thought that everybody was supposed to, I thought healthy was eating low calorie and no fat and, you know, just very typical. I mean, my homepage was bodybuilding.com. I'm not joking. Yeah. Like I was eating like baked tilapia, steamed the, you know, uh-huh. like like plain rice. Like I was just very. Um, now you know the irony of it is it, it, it was probably an improvement though over what you were it doing. It was a anyway. huge improvement, yeah. and I felt so much better. And I was actually were you starting to get regular bowel movements and depression? No, certain, but okay. I, but I was just starting to feel better, Got and it. especially with my body, like weights changed my body. Like for the first time, I like. I was getting toned. Like I, like I had muscle. Yeah. And I loved it. Like it was, you know, like I didn't realize before, you know, I never felt like I needed to lose. It wasn't about lose. I like, I was gaining weight and my clothes were falling off of me because my shape was changing. Mm. Um, and I loved having that control over my body. Like it gave me this sense of control. Like, I mean, going on the elliptical, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, what is this giving me? Besides, I'm tired and I hate it. Well, it's not really giving you it's taking, yeah, taking like, away from for the you first time. Actually yeah, lifting, yeah. Building, it was right? like three three weeks of just like using dumbbells. Like, I mean, I I had totally changed. Like, I looked different. You know, it was like, how can that actually happen? Um, digestive issues were still happening, but I was feeling way better. I go on a trip to San Diego. I 
am like, cheat day, gonna eat some Froyo. Froyo? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. That shit. So I don't know what happened. I'm gonna assume there was some bacteria in that shit, but for a week, I was so sick. So I for like a week straight I was just like shitting my pants throwing up at the same time oh terrible uncontrolled like literally for a week like I couldn't move I was I felt like an old lady like I was just like what am I doing like and I was freaking out after about five days there was like an hour where I stopped like I wasn't throwing up and um I made it down to the health center they laughed at me told me I was pregnant Oh, what? what? Told me the only test they wow. would give me was a pregnancy test. And I'm sitting over here like, should I be eating gluten? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like and the, the guy was such a fucking asshole. Like, don't even get me started on the UCLA Ash Center. I could, they're horrible. Just mm. so everybody knows they're horrible. Um, <laughs> n- not just me. Like, everybody who goes to UCLA and goes there knows that they are, it's horrendous. That, mm. that mm. medical, whatever. Too bad. It's horrible. Yeah, so I was like, very I had PTSD because I'm like do you know how much work it took me to get down here without shitting my pants and you're gonna laugh at me and tell me I'm pregnant I'm like wow I definitely am not pregnant like and so I made it back up then I was still just throwing up pooping my brains out nothing was stopping I made it back down this time I got a different doctor she told me to take Metamucil um and I was like I literally feel like I'm dying I'm like I I couldn't keep food down you Mm -hmm. know like So my parents, it was also my birthday that weekend. My parents and my sister came down to see me. They thought they were going to hang out with me. (laughs) They were really just going to, my mom was just going to do my laundry because I was just kind of shit in my pants. Like, um, it was horrible. And so finally she took me to urgent care. And that doctor was the first doctor who was like, took me seriously. He was like, you know, you should really try going gluten-free and dairy-free. And I was like, all right. I'm down because at this point I had researched this enough where it was rolling around in my brain in terms of the digestive issues. But like I wanted some authority figure to be like, you yeah. should do this. Like this right. is a good idea. Yeah. I wasn't just going to confirm it. it. Yeah. I wasn't just going to do it. Cause I mean, I didn't want to give, I didn't want to give it up if I didn't have to. Right. Um, so after that, um, finally I could function, but my digestion was definitely never the same. Like that was kind of like my trigger. I set everything off really badly. Um, but I, I went gluten-free, dairy-free. Two weeks later, I felt like I woke up and I literally felt like um, like I didn't need to wear my glasses anymore to class. Like I literally could see clear. I had so much more energy. My joints weren't hurting. Like it was insane. Like, People don't realize that when you are when you have an intolerance to food, it is an immune reaction mm-hmm. and it, your immune system is covers your whole body and it can display itself in a lot of different ways. Everything from like you're saying, joint pain, it can affect vision, it can mm-hmm. affect your sense of smell, your sense of hearing, yeah. your th- how you think. So it's what you're saying isn't, because I know some people are thinking like, how could it affect the, your immune yeah. system affects everything. And if yeah. your immune system is on this hyper alert, kind of inflammatory state, yeah, it's going to show up in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And the mental clarity. I mean, I've always been smart. <laughs> like yeah. I've always been the smart one. And I was like, Oh my God! What was I doing before? Like, like my per- my cognitive performance in class is like it it was crazy. Like mm-hmm. I just I felt so much smarter, and I was shocked. I was like, How was I doing this my whole life with while well, I was eating this crap? So my digestion didn't improve, but all of those I was like, I'm never eating gluten gluten or dairy again. Like mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. Um, but meanwhile, I'm like, What the fuck is going on with my stomach? Like at this point, it's even worse than ever before. So I start researching more and I think just seeing the power of how gluten and dairy affected me, I was like, food is going to heal me. Like, and I became, a, I became, how old a, are you at this point? 19, 19, 20, somewhere in there. Great awareness. That age. Um, oh, I was, just, I mean, impressive. Like I was, I became obsessed with this idea. Like this, like this food can heal me, like, um, make me feel better. And so I just started researching. Um, at the same time, I start seeing different nutritionists because I was convinced that a nutritionist would like know what I should take out or add into my diet to help me, like because I was convinced that was linked to my digestive issues. So I saw <sighs> so many freaking nutritionists in LA. You know, the be- supposed to be the best of the best celebrity nutritionists. Every time I get the same damn thing, they just give me a meal plan and it's the same meal plan every time it's like a thousand calories and I'm like I'm not in here to lose weight I'm in here to fix my digestion and every single person I saw 
was just telling me the same thing and they didn't mm. I could tell they didn't know what, what were they saying to you like low fat high fiber I will tell you grains. I'll tell you what was breakfast a cup of oatmeal with water lunch a piece of fish with a side salad dinner <laughs> A piece of chicken with some steamed vegetables. God, wow! Yeah. <laughs> it's and staple. I was like, I was like, I can't do this. I like, I one time I tried following the low calorie thing, um, and I didn't last longer like two days. I was like, I'm, I can't function. This isn't gonna work because I need straight A's. Where did you finally start <laughs> getting answers? Yeah, I was gonna say, was there um, a functional medicine practitioner? So I, my acupuncturist, I started getting acupuncture. Um, yeah. Um, I started getting acupuncture and I freaking loved her. Pamela. She's shit. I loved her. And she was the first person. She's like, you know, I want to give you a stool test and check check out what's going on. Get a stool test done. And I have candida. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Like if I get rid, <laughs> I have of, something. If I get yeah. rid of the candida, yeah. like all my answers will be so Like, right. you know, I was like, this is it. This is the candida. Yeah. So I go on this um, candida protocol. And Which is what like it's kind of like it's no carbohydrates. Yeah, so no no fruit, no That's starchy keto, carbs, keto diet, no starchy carbs. Um, yeah, similar <laughs> paleo, like mm-hmm. you know, um, no sugar. But at this point, I was like, all right, I'm so down with this. Um, so I do it, and I what you have to understand about me is like I'm very good at following rules, like. I'm too good at following rules. And so I clung to that thing, you know, the things on the list that she was like, just have these in moderation. I was like, I'm not having those mm. at all. You know, it's like, it's like the thing with exercise. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. more, m- the most is the best. You know, like more yeah. I get better get results. Extreme. So that means even more is better, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. what you think. Right. So I cling hardcore to this and I was doing it all wrong. Like not meaning to, like I just, I didn't have any fat in my diet. And when you go that low in carbs, you got to increase the fat, mm-hmm. right? So I was literally living off of protein and like non-starchy veggies. But for the first time in my life, I wasn't bloated. I wasn't pooping, but I wasn't bloated and I felt great. And I clung to this. At the same time, I'm clinging more and more to my exercise because that was the one thing in my life I could control. That was the one thing in my life I had control over. Like, I hated school. I felt like I couldn't control that. I couldn't control the relationships in my life. I There was just nothing I liked except working out. Mm-hmm. So that grew into an exercise addiction. And at the same time, I'm going on this this candida diet what was your exercise addiction what did that look like just you're at the gym every day lifting weights yeah like and it wasn't even it was too much for my body for me with the amount of food i was eating like it was like i had to lift weights for an hour and 15 minutes every day Mm. that was it like i had to do it and i i had my routine and i had to exactly do that routine never change it like very ocd um and i was just and then I was like obsessed with reading, reading bodybuilding.com and reading what the chalkboard mad was saying and mind body green. I just became obsessed with consuming this information. And meanwhile, I'm dropping a shit ton of weight. So I'm a small person. I dropped 40 ish, oh, 50 shit. pounds in the span of about two or three months. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. But you should tell, where do you walk around right now? Tell people so they understand. Their yeah, you're I'm, tiny. Like, I'm like 120 right now. Mm-hmm. Holy smokes. That's um, a lot of weight. Then. I'm usually. Like my whole life, I well this so my Almost whole life. A third of your I body was, weight. I was around. Time. I was around one ten most of my life. When I got when I had mono, I was at to like one thirty, mm-hmm. and then I slowly like was dropping it, and then I got down to like seventy pounds. Oh wow. my goodness! There's Mysterio. You're oh, one yeah. of these. Hey, yeah. hey, welcome <laughs> back. He's so handsome. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was like seventy seventy three. I think was my my lowest, Whoa. but. Um, obviously everybody around me was pretty concerned. Right. I had severe body dysmorphia and mm. like did not, re- like I knew I was dropping weight, but I didn't, what I looked at, what I saw when I looked in the mirror was not what I looked like. Like I look at, back at pictures now and it, it kills me. Like, what, what did you see? I mean, I just saw the same girl that I looked like in high school. Like, you thought you looked the same? Yeah. Like I just thought I looked the same. Like in, it was easier for me to see it in photos. Because I would take pictures and I would look and I'd be like, I look so horrible. Like I hated the way I looked Mm. in pictures. I hated Mm. it. And, but I just like wasn't really seeing it. And, and then I kind of started to see it, but I wasn't seeing how bad it was. I had a similar experience where Hmm. I was at a friend's house and we had done a workout, whatever, and it was hot. We we had our shirts off and 
I looked at a mirror that was reflecting off of another mirror mm-hmm. that had my reflection in it. So I had see, I, so I saw myself from an angle that I don't normally see myself in. And in a split for a split second, I didn't recognize that it was myself, mm-hmm. which was the greatest gift I could ever be given because for a split second, I was object, I could objectively see myself and I had recognized that, wow, I have muscle. Whereas when I looked at myself in the mirror, knowing I was looking at myself, I always look skinny. I always look like I don't have any muscle. Mm -hmm. So for a split second, it was like a moment of clarity. And, you know, being able to look at pictures of yourself and stuff kind of provides that a little bit, right? Gives Mm -hmm. you a little bit of objectivism. Yeah. No. And I I took a lot of pictures actually during that time and I would just delete them and I get frustrated. And at the time I was like, why do I look like shit in all these pictures when I don't look like this? In real life, that's what I thought. Mm. <laughs> when in reality, the picture was showing what I look like. I wasn't seeing it in the mirror. Mm. But I mean, I also was so insecure because I hated it because no clothes fit me. Everything was baggy on me. I didn't like the way I looked. Like I looked like I hated the way my arms looked. I was so insecure about my arms because they were too muscular for mm. me. Like I, I, you know, like in Chex Mix, those those pretzels that look like this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, That's yeah. how I felt like my arms looked. And I was like, Jesus, like it looks horrible. And I was like embarrassed. Like, <laughs> like, and I couldn't, I just like couldn't wear any clothes or find any clothes. I was just wearing like baggy dresses, no pants. And I didn't want to like buy new clothes because I was like, well, I'm going to gain more weight. But I couldn't gain more weight. And I was hungry and I was eating a lot of food. And I was confused because I'm still not pooping. And I'm eating like a whole chicken at every dinner. Like, you're eating the same, but point, the same low fat. That's yeah. Same pro- at this point, I was eating a huge volume of food, but like not that much fat. I mean, compared to what I eat now, not anything. Um, but I mean, I was eating like pounds of meat with mm. every meal and like it wasn't leaving my body and I was losing weight and I was scared. Like I was like. So you're identifying now at this point, like, okay, I need to gain weight. Yeah. Like, this isn't good. Yeah. And I'm freaking out um, because, and I just felt like a piece of shit. I mean, just all of the things that come along with being that low weight, I was freezing. Like besides the fact that I was just getting looked at, like I was a freak of nature. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I was freezing all the time. My hair is falling out, you know, like, I, like I can feel, I couldn't even sleep because I can feel my knees knocking against mm. each other. Like I didn't like when people touched me, I didn't want to hug anybody. Cause I was literally scared. They're going to like mm. squeeze me too hard. Like, I mean, I felt it right. But I was so worried about my digestion. And at this whole point, I'm still convinced. I'm like, this is rooted in my digestion. And like the candida left, but by this point, I had become really orthorexic and was really afraid of carbohydrates because eliminating them was the only thing like that made my stomach feel candida. better. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I was like, I thought if I just started, if I started eating carbs again, I was going to get candida back. God, what a lesson in what works for your body now is not what's always going to work for your body. Yeah. I mean, you did what you had to do to get rid of candida, but you had clung to it mm-hmm. to where now it's no longer serving you. Now it's now it's going against you. Mm-hmm. Are you going Are you going to school for nutrition at this time, or are you? No, this I'm is just before. At UCLA, yeah. Okay, so this is before. Yeah. So you didn't know what where were you, you studying to... before that. Yeah. I'm. I studied psychology and film. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't know at this point you weren't thinking I'm going to get into this field of health and nutrition. You're no. just focused on yourself. With yeah, that. I was very just trying to fucking stay alive at this point. Now, what did you? How did? When did you start putting together that? I need more fat in my diet and I'm working out too much and all that. Um, well, I knew that the exercise was like, I mean, it was controlling me. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was just this mental thing. Like every day, like my, like I wouldn't hang out with my friends because uncle, that's when I'm going to the gym. You know, it was just like controlling me, like let alone that it was, I shouldn't have been working out when I'm not eating enough, like when my body, when I'm so thin, like just mentally, I knew it was controlling me, but I just couldn't, I couldn't let go of it. How did you break it? Oh, we're getting there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Let me. I'm like trying to fast forward. Explain your own story. Yeah. I'm yeah. seeing. I'm seeing a shit ton of doctors because I'm just really scared. I'm seeing GIs. I'm seeing endocrinologists, rheumatologists, all these people. Everybody's just telling me you're anorexic, and I'm like, I'm not anorexic though. Like, and this was the issue: is everybody in my like nobody believed me. Oh, wow. mm. Nobody believed me. Like my roommates believed me because they lived with me and they saw what I was eating, and that's what was also scary. And like, you know, my like my sister and my cousin came down one weekend, and I know it was just to like, they just wanted Check to make you. sure I was yeah. eating, but mm. they were just saying we're, we're going to help you. And like, you know, it was hard because everybody around me was just 
looking at me like it's just that look. It's like in their head they're thinking, I know you're anorexic, but mm-hmm. nobody wants to say anything. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm the kind of person I'm very direct. Like yeah. nothing pisses me off more than You don't somebody. want an elephant in the room. Yeah, you want to no, like bring it nothing out. Nothing yeah. makes me more upset than somebody who beats around the bush. Yeah. Like just fucking say what you're gonna say. Like I just get to the point, right? And so when when you're trying to like small talk with me and I'm sitting here like and I'm like I'm dying right now like can we talk about about it it. like let's talk about the fact that you're looking at me and you think I'm anorexic like just ask me like (laughs) just fucking ask me help me trouble help me troubleshoot this and like nobody would talk about it and when I would try and bring it up they'd avoid it you know that's funny and and like but I know like by the end of that weekend that they came down they were like yeah you know we came down just to make sure eating but at this point we're like scared because we're seeing how much food you eat like, like that's scary. Like mm-hmm. you're eating this much food and you're still dropping weight. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like, mm-hmm. and so meanwhile, I'm freaking out because everybody thinks I'm anorexic at this point. I mean, I was in, I was in therapy and, um, they are telling me that I need to go to a treatment center. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding? I'm like, if I go to a treatment center for something I don't have, I will then become anorexic Mm -hmm. and my gut issues will not be addressed. I will not get the help I need. And then I will literally die because at this point I'm realizing I have malabsorption. Okay. Like I have severe malabsorption issues. Like either that or there's a fucking hole in my intestines because I don't know where the hell Mm. things are going. Mm -hmm. Like, and like no, and I was so pissed because nobody's believing me. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I get an endoscopy and a colonoscopy done. Nothing shows up. Like, I, I God, how frustrating I is that? The, All these people, professionals that yeah. you're seeking out and no one has answers yeah, for Yeah, and I'm getting mm-hmm. pissed and I, I walk into every fucking appointment. You know, I'm seeing the best of the best. I walk in with my fucking file, all my tests. I'm get, I get tests run. I mean, getting tests run was like my job. Like literally, I was doing all these weird ass tests and like getting blood work done pretty much every other day. You know, and I'm like, I'm struggling here. I'm still a full-time student and I... I've, I'm a, like, I was always a straight A student. I've never gotten an A minus in my life. I work my ass off with everything I do, right? And like, I don't have a car. Like, I'm, like, I'm in the middle of no, like, I have nobody who believes me, right? And every doctor I go to is just like, you're anorexic. You just need to eat some food. I'm like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> you guys are crazy. And so, I, and I walk in there and I'm doing all this research, like, for myself, by myself, and I bring all my lab work. And all my tests and I bring in all my piles of research and studies I've read and like, do you think I have this? Can you test me for that? I want you to run this test on me. And doctors get intimidated. Like they don't like it. Or like, I'm like, have you thought of this? And I'll I'll see their face. And you can tell they're like, I didn't think of that, but that's probably a good idea. Are you quizzing me? Yeah. Yeah. You can tell. I can tell. It's like, they're like, oh, you know, and they're like, no, you don't have that. I'm like. No, but I might. You just don't want to admit that right. I just came up with a better idea than you. <laughs> yeah. You know, the like ego. Yeah, pretty much. Like, um, so there was just a lot of that going on, and it, it was hard for me at the time. I mean, looking back, I'm just bitter about it because you know, at the time, I want to believe that these doctors are the experts. Like, they're supposed to help me, mm-hmm. but I, I went in there every time, and I felt like, why do I know more than you? Mm-hmm. Why are you a GI and you don't know what SIBO is? Mm-hmm. Like. Are you kidding? Like, you know, shit like that. Like, I was just so frustrated. And so, and I'm freaking out now because it's getting, like, they made me interview to go to a treatment center. They were going to send me to Arizona for anorexia. Um, And I'm freaking out because I'm like, get me a good GI. Like, (laughs) like, like I'm eating food. You know, I had to bring people with with me to appointments to vouch for me that I was eating. Like, that wasn't an issue. I wasn't afraid to eat food. Um. And God, how frustrating that had to be. That I had was, been so frustrating. Yeah. And what was hard, it was like, even the people, even the people who were vouching for me just still didn't understand it. I mean, I didn't understand it. And so I could tell it was kind of like, mm-hmm. I mean, I know my, my, my parents were, my parents didn't know what to think of me. And it caused a lot of problems in my relationships with pretty much everybody. Like, Right, I bet a lot I of people lost... thought you were lying and probably throwing up behind closed doors and mm-hmm. bullshitting them and stuff like that because no one had answers. Doctors were telling you it's anorexia. Yeah. I'm sure they're all believing the professionals too. So yeah. what a toll it probably took on your family and your friends and everybody else too with you. Yeah, I lost almost every relationship Wow. in my life. Wow. And so I felt very isolated. Like the only person... The, the the main person that I felt like was there for me was my my therapist and like at this point my nutritionist 
because I found a nutritionist. It took me a long time to find a nutritionist who like listened to me and believed me and clicked with me. And like, she was amazing. Um, but she was the one who like sat me down and she was like, you have to understand that like you're, there's so much stress on your heart. She's like, if you don't stop working out, like you could have a heart attack and like you could die. And like, when she just like looked at me and said that, I was like, holy shit. No one's like sat me down and told me like, you can die. Like no one said that to me, you know? And like that kicked me in the ass and I went home and I cried and I called the few friends I had left and I tried to like argue my way out of it. I was like, she told me I can't work out anymore, but like working out is my only stress reliever. It's the only thing that makes me oh, happy. Wow. And I'm, I tried to like give, and my friends were all like, I think you should listen to her, you know, like, and then after that, I was like, okay. And I stopped and it was really hard. And at first it turned into like, let me see how many calf raises I can do while I'm brushing my teeth. Like, you know, like <laughs> trying to cheat yeah, it. Yeah. Like trying to cheat it. Um, and it took some time, but like, that's where my, my therapist helped me yeah. and I, I stopped, I gave up. And I think that that was the most important thing for me to do. And I realized, I mean, I know I stopped working out completely and guess what? I didn't get fat. <laughs> <laughs> like I, th- well, the issue was, I mean, I stopped working out and I ate even more food. And, um, I mean, at this point I'm eating probably like seven, 8,000 calories a day. What? what? And I'm dropping weight. Whoa. 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 You know, I did not. This is crazy. Yeah. You were eating that? No fucking way. Mm-hmm. No did you way. you eating that? Like what? Or am I jumping the gun here? I mean, <laughs> well, excuse me. I don't know. You were eating seven thousand calories, yeah. and you were holy wow. That would just that and would mind fuck weight. me. I well, know. you know, kind of knowing your personality, where you're like, a, I'm gonna determine to do something. Mm-hmm. I could see that. What like, like that like, I was eating that much? I could see that you're like, I'm gonna reverse this, so I'm gonna push. Well, it wasn't even like. Yeah, but I also was fucking hungry. I was so hungry. Like, Whoa. I mean, when you're 70 pounds and you've been, like, training. Yeah, like, your body's your body's obviously, you're not absorbing everything. And yeah. You're not getting all the nutrients, I, so it's still starving. I, I, yeah, even though you're not. and I'm like, so I was starving and I wasn't absorbing it. And so hmm. that this was when, and this is when I'm, like, really freaking the fuck out. Like, something's I'm like, going on big time. I'm like, I'm laying in bed all day. Like, I'm doing nothing. Like, and I'm dropping weight. Like, because I dropped to, like, and at this point, every pound is mattering and i also got sent to this psychiatrist who basically was like you're anorexic and you're lying and it's unethical for any doctor to treat you so i got cut off from every other doctor i got cut off from my therapist from my gi my endocrinologist um i got cut off from everybody and they weren't allowed to communicate with me or treat me until i passed these tests that would determine like if my tests were at a certain level i had to be sent to this treatment center in Arizona. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Like, and so that was horrible. So how did you, what, okay, we'll keep going. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm really perplexed on the, I know the I can't believe you just dropped, I just she can't drop the cliffhangers dude, like every right. five minutes. You well, dropped a five to seven K calorie at <laughs> like fucking a half hour into the I story. I want to know what happened. I mean, I can't, I, if you came to me when I was in my early twenties and you said, said all, I would have said the same thing too. I'm like, this, this bitch is lying. Yeah, that's impossible. She's, <laughs> she's fucking going behind. She's, she's running around the corner, sticking her finger down her throat and throwing it. There's no way yeah. she's consuming five to seven thousand calories a day and she's 75 pounds i wouldn't believe it well it's hard for me i mean the whole thing's hard for me because i still don't fully understand it and i mean we'll get into this what i'm dealing with now it's like i still have things now but like i mean and during it's hard for me also to tell the story because you have to understand when you're that thin like i mean i couldn't think like my cognitive function was gone Mm -hmm. like people don't talk about that enough like Hmm. i was I felt stupid. Like, I would forget what I said the sentence before. People would ask me a question, and I was like, what did you just say? Mm. And that was a huge blow to my self-confidence because my identifier my whole life was I was a smart one. Mm. And I lost that, too. Mm. So at this point, I'm like, I fucking have nothing. I have no friends. I cannot, like, my body is withering away. Like, I... I didn't know, you know, like, Mm. my family, I felt very abandoned by my Mm. family. I just, I didn't know what the fuck to do. And at this point, I'm like, I feel like I'm going to die. Like, I literally thought I was going to die. So I um, took a quarter off school 
which was a huge deal for me. Like to me, that was like failure. Sure. Like that was failure. And I was so embarrassed and I didn't do that by choice. Like, um, thankfully I passed, I passed the heart test. So my heart rate was high enough so they, they I could see my therapist again. <laughs> and the thing was that she, you know, she told me, she's like, you know, I feel horrible because I was just kind of not saying anything, but I should have stopped them because she knew that I, I wasn't anorexic. Mm -hmm. But you, she was like, but she told me, she was like, you know, for a long time, I couldn't tell either. She was like, I wanted to believe you, but like, I was also like, I didn't get it. So I thought maybe you were still lying. Like, like nobody believed me. Or like, maybe lying to yourself so much yeah. that you believe. Yeah. Yeah. That's what would be going through my head. Yeah. I'd be I thinking mean, she's sure. so convinced, but she doesn't even know. Yeah. And I mean, thankfully, the, I mean, that's the nice thing though about like having roommates, you know, like, I mean, like at, at college, it's like, I mean, there's no way I was going to be hiding that from my roommate. So sure. that was like my one saving grace, like my roommate, like who's like my best friend, like, I mean, she knew and I was like, okay, I'm not psychotic. And at this point I realized like I had to hand over a lot of the decisions to other people because I knew I was like, I'm not in a state of mind to be making these decisions, which is why the school thing for me, I was like. I told my therapist, I was like, you just need to decide for me because, like, I can't make smart decisions right now. Because um, I, I couldn't trust myself, but I also knew I wasn't, like, lying. Mm -hmm. But I knew that, like, I couldn't trust myself in terms of, like, I mean, you know that I hustle, right. you know? And so I was, I was like, doing school is not going to stress me out more. I, you, know, you couldn't like, trust that. Yeah. And also this whole issue of, like, not still not understanding the effects of stress on health, which is, you know, Nobody wants to admit that, but it's like you mm -hmm. can't heal when you're stressed out. No, you it's know? part of health. Yeah, like That's it. right. But I didn't want. I was like, what's the difference between me laying on my bed doing homework and me just laying on my bed doing nothing? Like besides me getting a quarter behind in my life, because at this point I'm desperate to get the fuck out of UCLA. Mm. I hated. I hated school. Like, and it was just this huge fight. And whatever they told me, you can't go back to school. I tried to wiggle my way out of it. Walked to the center. Tried to. I literally was like going to pay full tuition to take a two unit class because I just would not give up the idea of going to school. Uh -huh. I didn't I didn't like I was so worried about how people would judge me like for taking a quarter off school, which is so stupid. I'm mm -hmm. like, I look back. I'm like, shit, I should have well, taken what, a year off. I should have quit. Well, well looking you, back, I, I should have dropped out. <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly. Well, what you you I, you already said it. You identified with that. You're the smart right. girl. Yeah. You, know? you, you got the grades to get into a school like UCLA. You're kicking ass while it's you're there. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, that's your greatest strength. Right. Your you, greatest weakness. Right. You yeah. identify with that. So I could totally understand why that would be a struggle to let it go, you know? Yeah. So I took the quarter off, ended up being like the best thing ever right um but slowly started i mean i was like okay if i told myself i'm taking this quarter off i'm gonna figure this shit out by the end of this quarter because i'm going back to school mm. in winter um so literally eight to five every day at doctors for 10 weeks this is what i'm doing getting all these random tests run um finally i mean my gi so much fighting with him, whatever. But he wouldn't listen to me. I was telling him for weeks that I had SIBO. It was a big fight. Then I finally convinced him to let me take a test. Um, and then it came back negative. It was this huge ordeal. And it came back negative, And I was pissed because I'm like, I know I have it. And then I start arguing about, you know, the accuracy, the validity of these mm -hmm. tests. He's like, no, blah, blah, blah. He's like, you know, SIBO, we don't even know if it's real. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm dealing with this. Um, it was this this huge thing but he gave me the antibiotics i was like just give me the fucking antibiotics gives me them i take them and something happened like didn't fix me but at least like i pooped <laughs> <laughs> like and i was like, okay that did something like something's going on i was like i want another round because i know a lot of people need two rounds and at this point he had gotten so basically all of my doctors hated me because I'm that girl who's calling every day. Like, are my test results in? Like, I want to get tested for <laughs> you this. You wore them down. Everybody yeah, hated me. Yeah. yeah. Like, let alone the fact that when I'm in the room, I'm questioning them and asking too many questions. Well, God, it feels like life or death for you at yeah, this point. I yeah. mean, I could totally, I mean, I can't imagine your size. So that's like relative to me eating 10 to 12,000 calories every day. And if I saw myself dwindle down to, I would fucking oh, yeah. freak mm -hmm. out. Oh, I'd be like, I have cancer. And then yeah. if I was, and then I'm going to see yeah. doctors and yeah. they're all telling me I have anorexia and I'm like, yeah. no motherfucker, I'm eating 10. I would be, I would be scared to death. Yeah. I was like, where is it going? I yeah. literally thought there was a hole in my intestine. Like the, I was so pissed when the colonoscopy, nothing came back. I was like, 
And the colonoscopy didn't even work because I like they made me drink that stuff and nothing happened. Oh, oh wow! You have to, you're supposed to like it's like liquid Drano. Yeah, and no, yeah. you should be pooping nothing right away. Happened. Oh, and, like, my parents were like, my mom would literally, my parents would come down and cook enough food for like three small villages, and they'd like freeze it for me so I'd have it for the week, and like they would see what I was eating, and like my dad, I would hear my parents talk about me. He's like. How is she eating so much food? I don't get where it's going. And they would argue about mm. it, you know? And, like, I'm like, I don't, I don't know either. And then nobody knew, like, what to do with me. And I was still getting blamed. Like, I like, I get sat, like, my dad sat me down. And he's just starts crying. And he's like, you need to gain weight. And I'm like, what the fuck do you think I'm trying to do? <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding? I'm like, you're the one who just cooked me five pounds of steak and I just <laughs> ate them for dinner. Going down? Yeah. Like, and he's like, and he starts crying. He's like, I know, but like, you need to gain weight. I'm like, oh my fucking God. I'm like, what? I mean, like, I, I don't know what else to do. Like, I, yeah. you think you're freaking out? Like, how do you think it feels to be me right now? Like, right. when like, like I'm eating more calories and now I dropped down to 73 pounds and I was 74 last week. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, like I was doing everything I could to fight for myself when no one else was. Right. Like no one else was, and like, God, I'm so I'm so <laughs> pissed. Like, anyways, so my GI basically just ghosted me when I was like, I want round two of antibiotics. Just ignored you. He just he fucking ghosted me so hard. Like, <laughs> like they wouldn't like they wouldn't answer my calls. One time I. I like they picked up and she fucking hang up. She hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize that voice. <laughs> like they, they hated me. I'm, phone call. I'm sorry I was annoying, but I'm like also like if I'm not annoying right now, I will die soon. Right, right. Like, I, God, it was a disaster. Anyways, um, at this point, I was like back to my food, back to my research. Um, the only people that were still in my corner were my nutritionist and my therapist. And so I finally convinced my nutritionist. You know, I brought her all this stuff on AIP and um, like, you know, Crohn's disease and colitis and the effects of grains and gluten. And she finally um, let me go paleo, which is like what I wanted to do. Because at this point, okay, so after my carb fear, sorry, rewind, I forget. So after the orthorexia carb fear, I mean, I had to just start eating carbs. But the problem was I had really severe reactions. So I would faint every time I ate a carbohydrate. I would literally, I remember eating a fucking cube of butternut squash and I passed out. Wow. And I was like, what the hell? So obviously this made me even more afraid of it, right? I'm like, <laughs> I'm passing out when I'm eating carbs. Like <laughs> oh my, my body God. doesn't want it. But it was basically just like my body had like, I di didn't know how to metabolize. It didn't know didn't know what to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I had to slowly build uh, build it up. Like mm -hmm. it took a long time, um, and then they were like, "You need to eat quinoa and grains and rice and legumes and lentils." And I fucking hated it. And I was like, "Oh god!" And I felt like shit. But I was like, "Okay, I'll do this because I got to recover." Like at this point, I had realized, like. I need to do what, like, food is a prescription. Like, I don't care if I like it or if I don't. This is what I'm eating. Just going to do what they tell Yeah, me. I'm just going to do it because I don't want to die. Right. Like, I don't want to die. Right. Like, sorry. Work too hard <laughs> now at this point. <laughs> like, um, so I'm eating this stuff and I finally convinced my nutritionist. I'm like, just let me. I'm like, I'm still going to eat carbs. I'm just not going to eat the grains. I'm not going to eat the legumes. Like, just let me try it. And she finally was like, okay. And about... A week or two of that, I put on some weight. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that was kind of what, like, triggered me to, like, it. that's what started healing my gut at the end of the day. Getting rid of those foods that were obviously hurting me. And then very slowly I was putting on more Did weight. Did you ever figure out why you had an inability to gain? No. I mean, at this point. It's like a mystery. It's like a severe malabsorption. Thing. Although at this point, I mean, I'm convinced at this point, I'm waiting on test results right now that I got a parasite when I had that froyo mm -hmm. and that kind of stuck with me mm -hmm. the whole way. Mm -hmm. um, but I put on, I put on weight and that's basically what allowed me to put on weight. And I got to a weight where I was like, I, I was fine. Like mm -hmm. I was a normal person, but like I still, I was like, I could still use another 10, 15, 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, and I reached kind of a plateau. And then I found a functional medicine doctor in L.A. through my boss. 
at the time. Um, I mean, during this time, I had been doing so much of my own research, and this is when I got really into blogs. Um, and were you sharing the story, the, this whole process, or was it after the fact? It was you- more after the fact um, because my blog started off as like a beauty blog. Like, I like I didn't. This was had nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Like, and then I realized like I know all this information. I should. I should start putting it out there. And I kind of started to, but I was also embarrassed to at first. Right, right. Um, Takes a lot of courage. Yeah, it was a slow thing, but I started working. I was really passionate. I was more so passionate about the eating disorder side of things. Um, So I talked more about like my orthorexia, my exercise addiction, like um, gaining weight. Um, And that's how I found my boss, Jordan, who uh, wrote the book Breaking Vegan. And she was like a big face in the ortho, the like talking about orthorexia mm-hmm. and the eating disorder community. And so I went, um, met her, I became her intern and she was really great and hooked me up with her functional medicine doctor. And this was the first time I had an experience with a functional medicine doctor and somebody who practiced integrative medicine and took a holistic approach and didn't look at me like I was a psycho. Like he, he was, I told him my whole story and he was like, yeah, that makes total sense. He's like, I totally think you have SIBO. I totally think they should be eating paleo. Um, you're not crazy. Like you're doing everything right. And he was the first person who was receptive to my ideas. And you finally feel like validated. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I was, you know, I wanted him to tell everybody in my life, like, like yeah. she's not crazy, you know? Um, and he wasn't threatened by when I asked questions, he just answered them. He's like, Oh yeah, good idea. I'll look into that. You know, like something, you hmm. know? And I was like, thank God. Like it was a collaboration, not just somebody sitting there trying to tell me what to do and tell me I was anorexic and lying. Wow. Now, now you're, you're, now you're, you're gaining weight still at this point. Cause now what you're looking at you, you look like a healthy young lady. Yeah. So I had, I mean, I was like, I was at, I was like at a fine weight, but I had reached kind of like a plateau. Like I wanted another like 10, 15 pounds. Like I was like 105 Mm -hmm. Um, and I looked fine, but like I just wanted more. Like, Mm -hmm. um, and at this point I'm like, I know I'm like, my hormones are fucked. Like Mm -hmm. I need more weight. Like, you know, like, and at this point I was also on the pill and I was so scared of what my period would actually be like. Is it there? Mm, <laughs> you know, mm. um, I never lost my period that whole time because I was on the pill, right? Mm. Like when, when you're 70 pounds, you probably wouldn't have your period, but you know, those nice fake hormones, but whatever. So he tested, he gave me just so many tests um, and I retested for SIBO as positive. I found out I had a bunch of other bacterial overgrowth. So we treated those, you know, did, you know, different healing diets, herbals, antibiotics blah 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 did the whole thing and after that i felt better than ever i was finally pooping i was like fuck yeah like (laughs) like it was crazy my bloating went away um and i felt really good for a while and then a few months later some of my symptoms started to come back and it's never been like how it used to be but i was like not like my bowels were off i was getting bloated more and i was like I want perfection at this point. Like, well, you're afraid. Yeah, you're afraid of going back. Yeah, yeah. So then I started doing more tests um, and things, and found out I had candida again, and a few more bacterial overgrowths. And sort of since then, well, this is the issue now. Is like, I've had this mysterious case of candida for almost a year now. Um, it's not going away, and so they're trying to figure out what's going on. And so I'm trying to get to the deeper root of things. And so right now I'm waiting on my parasite test results. And to I'm, see what that's... Yeah, because I found out. I mean, I had been... I have asked... I've taken so many parasite tests before. Obviously, that was like one of the first things I've always asked. But I'm just finding out now that the test... The tests I've always been given aren't the most comprehensive. Mm. They're hard mm. to catch. They're hard. They hide. They're hard. And I've only ever taken a like a one day stool test for that. Mm-hmm. Like, and you can't do one day, right? So I feel like this is the first legit test. But my, but honestly, even if it comes back negative, I'm putting myself well, on it's a not parasite like, protocol. I don't even give a shit. Like, it's not like you were in a different part of the country too that you can identify. Well. Like- Oh, I forgot this. Oh, <laughs> there's what? more. Oh, 7,000 calories I was eating, by the way. I was in Thailand. Yeah, so part of, like, I went to Spain for two weeks um, 
that quarter I took off school. Damn, you know what? You just had like the fucking perfect storm. <laughs> yeah. It's like you have every, you caught everything. Right. You, got, yeah. <laughs> you got you got everything that well, you got, you got struck by Zeus. I thought there was a parasite in that froyo for sure. Like honestly, that that thing triggered like that mm, was some. that was bizarre. Like mm-hmm. I don't know anybody that was weird. Mm-hmm. But I went to I ended up going to Spain. That was my reward for hitting 95 pounds. Woohoo, we get to go to Spain. Yeah, yeah, so I went to Spain and I visited my friend who was studying abroad. Um, and that was the, you're going to love this. That was the one week in my life. My digestion was fucking perfect. Wow. Mm. Over in Spain. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Stress. Something thanks, food thanks, food quality. industry. Right? America. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it was crazy to me, but there was one day, like, everything was great and it was like the second to last day I was there and it was like the most American meal. We went to a smoothie shop. And like I got like a like a such an LA smoothie. Like it was the most inauthentic <laughs> thing, right? The rest of the week I had been just eating like pork and vegetables and lamb, mm-hmm. right? And I get this smoothie and I come home and I was just I mean, I got Tore up. it got sick. Mm-hmm. Like for like a solid day and a half. I was not It's probably a combination of like Sal kind of quietly said was the you're on vacation. It's a reward thing. So you're probably in a happy place vacationing. Your stress levels are probably lower. Plus you're eating these whole natural mm-hmm. foods. It was probably a combination. It is so hard to mm. identify. And this is, again, part of the problem is yeah. we try to separate the psychosomatic from the physical, from the whatever. We try to separate everything else and say, what is causing the problem when mm-hmm. it's all the same? Yeah. It all does. I, look, I tell you, I, I had a client uh, who had a physical injury that caused such trauma to them because it prevented them from doing the things that they loved. It prevented them from working that after they got healed, after the surgery was done, after they did the rehab and the function is good, they still felt pain. Yeah, the pain they, was still there. It was, and, and, and the pain caused them to move a particular way, which then caused the physical, rep, the physical part to happen as well. Yeah. And it took real work on the... You know, am I attached to this pain? Am I afraid of it because of what it did to me? Mm -hmm. And when this person connected the dots, it just vanished. It's very difficult to separate all stuff. It's all the same. I mean, I forget. I forget the name of the disease, but I mean, there's a disease that's literally like, you know, people will feel like crazy pain in their legs all the time. They can't walk. It's like like people will be paralyzed when it's like in their heads, Mm -hmm. you know, and doctors will it's this whole debate. And then people are like, well, it's not real. I'm like, well, that's still real. I mean, I think. I don't care if it's like in your, if it's happening and you're feeling this, it's real. You know what one of the number one off the label prescriptions for antidepressant drugs is for? Pain that cannot be uh, found with MRIs or x-rays or whatever. So people go to the doctor with back pain. Nothing's wrong with you. Uh, they can't figure out what's going on. Sometimes they'll give them an antidepressant and the pain will go away. Yeah, because they know it'll just make you feel better. It'll make you feel better. And I'm not advocating for the use of SSRIs for pain, but that just highlights that they're... That it, it, number one, it doesn't matter. If you feel it, you feel yeah. it. That really doesn't yeah. matter. It's still... Yeah, it's still real. It still exists. Yeah. It just might be Well, and mentally I mean, driven. that goes back to what I was doing with my GIs. I'm like, there's something wrong with my gut. Like, and you're telling me, well, the colonoscopy is clear, endoscopy is clear, like... You don't have celiac disease because the blood test says no, which I'm not even going to get into that. But like, you know, and I'm like, I don't care what these tests say. Like, there's something wrong. This is something, something's happening. Yeah. And even the SIBO thing, like, you know, he's like, you don't have SIBO tested negative. I'm like, there's something there. Like, Frick it, like fix it. After after you went through and you, because you shared this story on your podcast, right? Yeah. How, how many how many girls uh, reached out to you that shared a similar story or was oh there? so many and that's oh, wow. what scares me it's like my story you know when I put out my story people are like you have such an incredible story I'm like my story is not that unique people just aren't talking about it hmm. like I like or even if you don't relate to every single thing that happened like right. there's something in there that every woman has dealt with well that's what i believe everybody is has has dealt with something mm-hmm. that you that you you just went through all of it and an extreme level yeah. of all of it well, yeah, yeah it's like something it's like you have something <laughs> yeah. mysterious something's wrong with me i can't figure out what's going mm-hmm. on and either i it just a domino accept effect. it and be like this is just the way it's going to be now you know that's chronic pain chronic illness uh, you know, in modern societies, we don't really have issues with acute illness anymore. I mean, we still do, but not, not nearly like the problems we have with chronic illness, where we have no, yeah, we have no solution. Now, uh, now, 
looking back at all this, I mean, str- it's what you went through was incredibly challenging. As you're telling me, I'm feeling what you're feeling uh, as you're telling the story. And I can't imagine having gone through that at your age by myself, living on my own. Right. Um, but do you ever look back? And I don't know if I said this on the podcast or when we had the technical difficulty, but I want to say it again. Like, do you ever look back and think to yourself, this was a total gift because without all of this shit that I've gone through, without all of these challenges, I wouldn't have the knowledge that I have. I wouldn't have the passion that I have for helping people. I wouldn't mm-hmm. have been shown or given the gift of knowing what my destiny is or the direction I need to go. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like blessed that it happened because I mean, part of why I was so depressed and lost before was like, I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. And like, nothing sounded good to me. I felt like I was just trying to like, like there's this pressure on people in college and even in high school. Like, what are you going to do with your life? You know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, nothing sounds good. And I came out of this experience. I'm like, this is what I'm doing. Like, this is what I'm passionate about. And like, You know, you ask, you know, people don't, they're like, I don't get how you do everything you do. I'm like, I love everything I do. Like, I am doing what I want to do forever right now. And I'm 22, I'm right out of college and I'm doing it already. So yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the hell out of it. Like, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to waste time. (laughs) I'm not going to waste time. Like, there's no, Mm -hmm. there's no time to waste. God, this is, this is what I, this is exactly what we identified when we met you. This is exactly what we felt because... You it, you can tell when you meet someone. I mean, I know I can. I've hired lots of people that have worked for me, and very ra- very few people have I ever met where I can I feel like I can feel the purpose. Mm-hmm. I've met a lot of good people. I've worked with a lot of good people. People who worked hard. People who were successful. But it's rare where you meet someone, you talk with them, you hang out with them, and you leave and you go, that person has purpose. They that's know greater, what they need to do. That's yeah. greater than themselves. Greater than money. Greater than. I mean, when we asked you, we sat down with you and we started talking business before the podcast came on. We were asking all these questions about, because you've got your two podcasts, your blog, you've got all these people following you. We're asking like, is this how you may earn your money? Is this how you, and you're like, well, no. And that's not shocking because you're you're doing it because of, yeah, Yeah. it's your purpose. Yeah. And I think that's another sad thing as I think too many people now, they won't go even people who know what their purpose is, they won't go after it. They won't do it. And I get so pushed back, so much pushback now. You know, if one more person asks me, you know, when are you going to get a real job? Well, you know what? <laughs> My job is real. You know, like, you know, just because, just because you're too scared to leave your nine to five and do right. something that you actually like doesn't mean I have to do that. Right, right. Like, I would rather hustle hard and do what I love than sit there and hate my life and just follow the status quo and, like, Nothing great ever happened from somebody who just did what everybody else was doing. Right. Yep. Like you're not going to get anywhere just doing the same shit that everybody else is doing. I think I think I think it was a gift what you went through because for you to know that at your age yeah. uh, is rare. Oh yeah, forced like pulling people forced out of the you matrix. into a level of yeah. awareness that the average 20-year-old d- d- won't even experience you basically until did, they're probably 30. Yeah, you did 30 years of life school right in like yeah. two years yeah. hyper educated i think also it really helped me in terms of relationships in my life like i do not tolerate bullshit like mm-hmm. i would rather have no friends than like friends who are fake friends and there are so many people i saw during that experience who was there for me mm-hmm. and who who bounced and the people who bounced it's like i don't have time for you like mm-hmm. you know i don't and at this point all of my my close friends now we connect on such a deeper level because we have similar experiences, like any aspect of that story that we connect on versus I realized pretty much every friendship I had before that was just based on circumstance. You know, people I lived near, I went to school with, Mm -hmm. you know. It was comfortable. uh, Yeah. Mm. Especially in college, people are... So many people are just, you're just friends because you're going to parties together because yeah. you're in the same dorm. Proximity, yeah. Yeah, you know, and like people get so confused when they graduate and they're like, well, I have no friends anymore, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's because they weren't real friends. And the only thing you guys talked about was who hooked up with Johnny last night. Right. Like mm-hmm. you, you don't, you don't connect on anything real or anything deep, you know, like. So it's Do you think that's more common now than before? Or is that just the, is that a norm for all college students? Do you think it's, we're becoming more disconnected with oh, our relationships? Johnny. Do you, you mm-hmm. think so? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think people are just, I mean, people don't sit there and talk to each other. I get so irritated whenever I try and hang out with my friends and they're just on their phone. 
I'm like, <laughs> I'm literally physically, and I get pissed because I'm like, you have no excuse. I live so much of my life on the internet. And like, when I'm hanging out with somebody, like if I'm having lunch with you and I haven't seen you in six months, my phone is not, I'm not on my phone. Right. Like it's away. Like right. I'm trying to talk to you. Right. So, and you, you don't even have, you don't have an Instagram with people following you. No one cares what you're doing. Like, <laughs> like, you better, I'm you better, trying to get a hold of yeah, you. Yeah, you better put that shit away. Yeah. Focus on me. Like I feel like disrespected and that people, when people hang out, they're just all on their phones. All they're talking about is who's getting the alcohol and when are we going out tomorrow? And I'm just like, all right. So are, are all your friends as old as we are then? <laughs> no, no, they're they're younger. No, I, okay. I have like I have like three or four close friends who are my age, um, but they've all gone through things like me, you know. Mm-hmm. And most of my friends are like late twenties, I would say, early thirties. Oh, my issue is all my friends are married, so whenever anyone to hang out with, because they always want to hang out with their husbands. Yeah, lame. <laughs> Those lame, lame husbands. Yeah, married people. Yeah. So who who do you who are you talking to on your podcast? Like who are you trying to reach out to? What's your who's your message for? <sighs> like me three years ago. <laughs> I mean, really, like, this younger generation of women, like, you're 16 to 30, and you're getting these messages, um, and you're dealing with these things, and you're told you're a liar, or you're almost pushed into an eating disorder. I think so many of us are just almost forced into it with what we see on media, Um, and also just kind of growing up with my job, it's like, I think a lot of women would almost be ashamed to kind of do whatever they want and not give a shit about people. Hmm. And I'm very, I'm very polarizing. Like there are a lot of people who do you get a lot of hate who really hate me. Really? Yeah. Because I really speak my mind and I'm really blunt and, I mean, you're doing something right. We'll appreciate you later, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm like trying to teach you a lesson, you know. But it's like (laughs) people don't want to accept it right away. Yeah, you know. But it's like the same trait that people hate me for. Other people love me for. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, don't be afraid to like say what you want. Like, I think as a woman, so many of us are taught like that's not okay. Like, so many times in my life, I've said the same thing that I know if a man said it, no one would think twice. You know, if I say it, I'm a bitch. If I say it, like, I've gone too far. Like, if he says it, hell yeah. Like, you know? And so I just want to empower women. You know what? Uh, mm-hmm. So I experienced that uh, relatively recently. So my my daughter is, uh, she's eight, and um, she loves her friends, and they play together. But she can also, she's also a, a little bit of a leader, and she can be no. quite she can be quite assertive, yeah. right? Yeah, imagine that. Right? Yeah. And I heard somebody refer to her as bossy. This is a term. Oh yeah, that's a that's, that's a, a term you'll never hear. That's it. You'll never hear mm-hmm. a little boy be called bossy. Mm-hmm. Right. You'll hear a little boy be called assertive, mm-hmm. but not bossy. And I heard it for the first time, and I smiled, and I thought to myself, I'm doing something yeah, fucking right. She's, yeah. and, she's gonna be. Fine. And that's it. And I will. And 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 that's your what you're saying is absolutely true. There's definitely. Thing. And there's things on the other side too for boys too. Like you know, if you're a guy, you can't I'll right. T- you can't cry. Well, or dude, you can't, yeah, right, can't yeah. talk about your emotions. I yeah. was at a party. I was at a party with my girlfriend the other day, and I am like, I love kids, love kids, especially babies. I can't help it. I love baby. If I see a baby, then I'm gonna figure out a way to pinch hold your cheeks. I'm gonna figure out a way to hold that. <laughs> Here baby. I come. I'm yeah. the guy at the party. You're a creep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're at the park. Let me take oh, your give baby. me the baby. Hey. Exactly. Yes. So I'm at these parties, and I'm like, I'm trying to figure You're out so a way cute. to make people feel comfortable, so I can hold your baby throughout, you know, for the party. <laughs> and it's funny because I had this conversation with people, and I said, you know, because uh, everybody's like, because I'm a guy, right? So everybody's like, oh my god, he loves kids. This is so wonderful. He's so. Uh, and I'm like, you're only saying that because I'm a guy. Mm-hmm. And I said, this is actually, you know, it's in public. If I see a baby and I want to comment on how cute someone's baby is or say something, you're a weirdo. I got to yeah. be careful because I'm a man. They're gonna think I'm oh some guy, fucking no. weirdo. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So but if it's another woman came even, over and did that, I remember yeah. apologizing for like swatting um, like a wasp off of this little girl's head because I saw it there and I like swatted it off and I looked at the mom. I'm like, Sorry. There was a wasp right there. She's like, no, no, no. She's like, no, thank you. You know, but I felt oh like God. guilty. You know, it was weird, but yeah. it's like the thing. You, you want to be, 
you know, yeah. conscious of that. It's true. It's yeah. absolutely true. So, it but, goes both ways. But you, so you have uh, you have haters too. What do they hate on you for? Just for well, you do a lot you know, of what well, we a lot you, of things. Yeah, you do a lot of what we do. It's a wide variety. You of expose. <laughs> I mean, right before we got on air, and maybe we go this direction. We you were sharing with us some of these names, big name Instagram girls yeah. that are now selling workout programs online with no real credentials or experience. They've just basically yeah. got themselves in shape following another program and now they're basically well, multi-level marketing this, style. I don't have an issue with people who don't have credentials. I right, mean, right. No, that is, you're right. That's a big thing I'm passionate about is like this whole idea that people need credentials to know shit because I'm sorry. When I was 19, I knew more than pretty much every yeah. doctor I was Well, seeing. you saw, yeah, your own like, experience. Like, sorry. So mm-hmm. this is, and some of the people I admire most in the health community and I, I think they're the smartest people. <laughs> yeah, like they're not doctors. So I'm so sick of this bullshit. Like, well, you're not a doctor. What do you know? I'm right. like, okay, you can take your doctor's advice and we'll see how far you get. But right, right, that's right. all right. You know, unless you have a broken leg, but whatever. Um, I have an issue with people just like <laughs> just putting bullshit out. Like anybody, whether or not you're a doctor, mm-hmm. if you're putting bullshit out or like, I don't, you know what I mean. Sure. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. And, and feeding into the overtraining lie right because yeah because it's personal because you want to help <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you, it's personal how did you, i don't remember i think we asked you this but how did you find our show were you just on on the um, on podcast ben Greenfield. oh okay oh really oh, so cool. you of I course heard, you like Greenfield. i heard you guys on his and then i started listening to you and then the rest is. were history. you already listening to him consistently or did you just happen to come across that episode no i was listening to him consistently okay and then uh-huh. you guys were on because you know i just like dream of being a biohacker so, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, he's great so then yeah I heard you guys and I really liked you and then I just started listening do you to still you. listen to Ben and yeah I do cool not every episode but every lot. episode of Mind Pump yeah no no <laughs> <laughs> you guys like yeah. it's too what's much what's up Ben it's too hey, ben. much I we love you Ben choose. yeah um, so and then I was listening to I don't remember which episode but you guys were talking about Media, social media and messages being sent to young women mm-hmm. on an episode and I was listening to it and I actually was listening to it I was in the shower and I was listening and then I literally was like I gotta get these guys on my podcast <laughs> and I got out of the shower got dressed and I ran over to my computer and I emailed I emailed your email and I was like if this works <laughs> like God bless America but yeah and then I emailed and then I was so surprised I got an email back and I was freaking the fuck out that's and then, so cool and I was so irritated because no one no one else knew who you were like none of my friends so I had no one to be like you guys do you know what just happened like no, no one could <laughs> yeah, no, no one thought one it was could, cool right yeah, like, no I just got on my bumps coming yeah, to my house yeah I was like <laughs> freaking like, cool, out cool who's that yeah exactly everybody and I was like shit so but now that you've been on my podcast now people know how cool you are so now they get excited yeah I just got a I got a message from my cousin who um, I was spending a lot of time with probably about four or five years ago and he's off doing his own business and I kind of shared with him before this all started like this is the ultimate direction of this. Mm-hmm. And so he's always kind of known about it. And he sent me a message. This is just literally last night. And he's like, man, it's so crazy how much mind pump is exploding. He's all, I, I've, and I said to him, what do you mean? And he's like, oh, I know it's so big now that there was people that I used to tell about, he said, but now people come to me bragging about the show, telling me I need to listen, not realizing that you're my cousin. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, that's crazy that it's come full circle like that where well, I, I, random people are organically finding it and stuff too. I, at some point, the right message uh, gets it's out. The, yeah, yeah. And then the right message is the it one that time. it yeah. resonates. Mm-hmm. It resonates. And so we're seeing people like yourself. Like here you are, you start a podcast, had no experience podcasting, had no idea what you were doing like we did when we first started yeah. and you have a relatively successful You're podcast. You're a shining beacon. You have a, you have a, you have a, re, you actually yes. more successful. I'm surprised you didn't turn that into like a Star, I Star Wars did. reference. I almost did. almost did. It's, it's like a new light. hope. It's like a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. Your, your podcast is more successful than like 95% of the podcasts out there. There's a lot of podcasts that are out there and, you know, you're you're doing decently well. You have a good message. It's resonating with people. People need to hear. I hope so. Well, I mean, I just, I want people to stop dealing with it when it comes. Like, and that's why I'm so interested in this younger age group. Like, I wonder, like, what do you think about for your daughter? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you worried about? You oh, know? all the things, that, all the things we talk about. Like, all the things we talk about. And it's like, how are we going to combat this? And I look at these younger girls and I remember how I felt when I was... 9, 10, 11, 12, and like 
it's just all accelerated even mm-hmm. more, you know, especially with technology. And I'm worried because I'm like, if I'm feeling this way, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm 19, 20, and I felt, I remember how I felt when I was 12. God, no, I mean, mm-hmm. it scares the shit out well, of me. Well, the exciting, the exciting mm-hmm. part and what's what's unique and different is that we we have this medium now that didn't really exist 10 years That's ago. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know? Now they can and, find podcasts right. could like you, yours. Could you imagine... Mind pump being around when you were going through that process. Yeah. Back up seventeen, you know, at seventeen years old, you tripped on mind pump, and you'd already been listening for like, I'm sure stuff that we've talked about already in the show would have already led you in the direct. For sure, you would have been talking to Doctor Ruscio or yeah. you know, or Chris Cresser or somebody else that we've had on the show. If you, you, I mean, you would have already been all over that because we've talked about. It. So also, you got to think that these yeah. this young generation that's coming up. Well, the issue, what's hard though, is that now it's like we're just so oversaturated. Right, right. How do you get and the good stuff? My message message is so for me saying my message there's 20,000 other people with blogs putting bullshit out there yeah that's mm. true but you know what Christina it's all competing I tell, yeah. I tell you what and your story is not a tragic one your story is a success story mm-hmm. as what you went through and the challenges you went through you had the resources the ability to do your own research which if you if we just went back 30 years with those same symptoms, you would right. have been dead. Yeah. Oh, I know. You would have died. So, well, actually, no. But would I have even gotten into it in the first place? Well, that's a good. That's argument. a good point. That's a good argument. That's a good point. Yeah. But you had the ability to research and read. You yourself are obviously made of different stuff. You're very determined and focused, and you learned, and you're intelligent, and it's a success story. You got to look at it that way. I think. Mm-hmm. You, you, again, your 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 story comes out so passionate because you lived it, I, and yeah. it's it sucks to say that. I look, I went through my own shit, and I know, and I look back, and I'm like, you know what? Had I not done that, I'd still be that meathead trainer. You yeah. know, hundred percent. Well, yeah, being resilient to all that stuff too, it's helped. Now, now you can be very clear what your message is, and you can cut through, not trying to like have the niceties attached to that. Right? You can actually like speak to people. There's like, also yeah. there's also empathy when you have a young yeah. girl come to you and say to you about how they feel and how no one's listening to me, nobody understands me. Yeah, you know rather than you, rather than like the average person be like, well, maybe you're crazy, whatever. Yeah. You're empathetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that it helps me so much like with health coaching now, like as a nutritionist, like, I mean, people who work with me, they tell me, you know, I picked you because they always say, you know, even though you're young, I picked you because you get it and no one else gets it. I'm like, yeah, I get it. And <laughs> at the end of the day, I mean, for me, in my own experience, that was what was most important to me. I'm like, I don't need somebody who has all the answers because no one's going to have all the answers. Mm-hmm. But I need somebody who gets me, you know, and who is going to help me and like lead me. And like, I mean, I get it. <laughs> you know, I lived through a lot of this similar things to what most of my clients are. Now, dealing with. off air, we were talking about your relationship with your parents. And mm-hmm. I was alluding to. Uh, my relationship with my parents and I know, and it took me till I was like 30 years old before I really started to piece this together that, you know, it was, it was really, it was a rough, it was rough. It was off and on. I'm good with my parents and I'm not so good with my parents. And what I found out was I held on to a lot of animosity because of what I went through. And so it would be very easy for them to trigger me. Mm -hmm. They said something right. Like give it like, do you find that you have a similar relationship with your parents? Like they can't talk about health. They can't talk about fitness. They can't talk about anything like that probably around you. Does it trigger you? And it, what's your relationship like with them now? I think there's a lot of resentment both on both sides. Um, I try not to talk about, it's not really with the health or fitness stuff, but I don't like to talk about my job really with my family because it just turns into, well, when are you going to get a real job? Mm. I don't understand what you're doing. It doesn't make sense. If I get, this is the question. I don't even understand this question. When are you going to get a job? Oh no. Why can't you get a job in the industry? Like what industry? (laughs) What does that even mean? (laughs) Yeah. Like what is the industry? You know, you know, a job in the industry, like, I'm like, what fucking is your Like a job about? in the industry, I understand, 30 like, years ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I, I don't even, you know, it's like this whole thing that nobody really knows what I'm doing. Um, you know, my extended family literally has no idea. I'm pretty sure they just think I'm sitting in Los Angeles, like, laying on the beach, doing nothing. Don't trip on that shit. People still like, think they shame shit about us. Right? Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah. you know, I mean, I, it, it's hard. Away. They didn't know... They didn't know what to do with me then, and I I resented 
I resented them a lot. Um, they resented me a lot because they didn't understand. They thought I was lying. Um, and they also, I mean, they cut me off from the rest of my family. I mean, during that time, I had told my parents, I don't, I was so stressed out. And I was like, this stress, I cannot deal with this stress for like my heart, for my health. And I told my parents, do not contact me. I will contact you when I'm ready. Like, and that made them fucking mad. So they told my whole extended family, like my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, do not contact Christina. So I was just cut off from everybody in my life who I was close to. And and I didn't know that my parents told everybody not to talk to me. So, so you just I, thought everybody I thought stopped. everybody just bounced. Mm. Like I thought everybody just, and I was like, like I'm, and so I felt all this resentment because I thought everybody, you see me, you see me withering away and you're just ignoring it. Like, because this is the thing though that pisses me off. If I was anorexic, most people who are anorexic are not going to be like, I really want to get treat. I really want to be in treatment. Right. Like, like they're in denial. You kind of have to have somebody take responsibility. And be like, you need to go yeah. get help. You have to have mm-hmm. somebody kick you in the ass and be like, you're doing this. I'm making this decision. And I'm like, so if I was anorexic, I probably wouldn't have been fighting for myself, and I would have just died probably because mm-hmm. I wouldn't have stopped. Mm-hmm. Do you find do you find because you've gone through this like over addiction to exercise, uh, orthorexia, where you, everything had to be super clean with food, the fear with carbs? Do you have you found a deeper root to that? Does did it feel like it's just trading one for the other? Are you still dealing with anything like that, or do you have a tendency for that? I think it's like I mean I have like an addictive personality in general. I think it just re- comes back to this issue of control, and like I've learned to use that control in a healthier way. And I also it also just stems so much from just being unhappy with myself and my life. And like now that I'm like so happy with everything I'm doing, and I really love my life, like. I, it, I don't feel like that anymore. You know, you it's think- like I thought that by controlling those things, I could fix it. Mm-hmm. And if I fix that, like life would be great. Like, you know, it would be better. And it, it wasn't. And it's like life is good. Like I don't need to do that. You, do you know, I don't do feel- you think that stems that trait stems from one of your parents or something that happened to you as you raised or the way you were raised? Yeah, absolutely. I think I mean, my whole life, I was just looking for validation and approval um, I felt like no one was paying attention to me. I mean, that came with my, my OCD with school was like a huge thing. Like, like I was a 99% was not good enough. Like I needed a hundred percent. Like I spent my whole life studying like stupid shit in school and I, it was like life or death. And I just, I, I, I was just looking for validation and I wanted somebody to say, I'm proud of you. You're doing enough. And I never, I never got that. I never felt that. I always felt like a failure. Like the only things that were pointed out to me were the things I was doing wrong. You know, I was a straight A student. I was not doing drugs. I was drinking a little, but like responsibly. (laughs) Um, You know, like I was a really good kid. And I remember getting so pissed because I'm like, you would not get like, especially in the environment I'm in. I'm like, you you should see what the kids around me are doing Mm -hmm. right now like because i'm the only one in this room not doing coke like you know like don't tell me i'm a bad kid you know um and so whenever i would get critiqued i would just get really butthurt about it sure like i would just be so pissed because i'm like how you know and i just never felt like i was i just felt like what do i have to do for somebody to pay attention to me that's how i felt you know and i just never got it um and it took me a long time to realize that I don't need that from anyone outside of me. I just need it for myself. Were your, awesome. were your parents like mm-hmm. militant or did they have religious background or what, what no. made them so you feel like made them so controlling or get made them feel like they didn't, you know, you never had their approval. They just kind of, I mean, they weren't, I guess, concerned with me. Like my mom. Probably because you did everything so well. Yeah. And my parents also resented me. My parents are a little scared of me. My mom's told me this, that you know, I scared that, like, she would felt threatened by me because I was so smart when I was so young. I um, mean, when you, t- I, you talked about when you were younger and you were that kid who was always call people out. And, yeah. like, I was that kid. Uh, I was, I was a smart kid and people didn't like that. And, like, I know my parents, they got a little, a little afraid. And, like, my mom has told me, she's like, you know, she would talk 
to me on behalf of my dad. I'm like, why isn't dad talking to me? And she's like, he's a little scared of you. Because I'm very like, I mean, my family, the reason I can talk to you guys is because I grew up, if I want to say something, I got to yell and I got to get in there. Like, Mm. we're all opinionated and we all bust each other's balls and like... You know, you just got to get in there and scream and yell and there's <laughs> things are f- like flying and, you know, it's it's a disaster. So my mom is a hustler and she's always been a hustler. And I learned from her, you know, she would work from six, you know, she works across that she'd drive an hour, work from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night and pass out. Wow. Well, damn. And I learned like that that's hustling and like that's success, you know, and like, um, my dad was always really successful too, but he's not as like intense as my mom. My mom's like really intense. Um, so I think that's kind of, they were just, no one was really paying attention to me. My sister needed a little bit more help. Like, and I didn't like school came easily to me. Like I made friends easily. And, you she know, had more struggles. Yeah. She over. might, you know, she did had a harder time in school. She just like, needed help with more things and I just always did everything on my own. Did you watch the she's movie? She's younger did sister? You, she's my older sister. Older sister. Did she's, you watch the movie Wonder? No. So in that, you got the kid who Don't has... spoil it. I'm not, <laughs> but, but he's, you know, he's got the, the he's got the issues yeah. and they show the movie from the perspective of him, his sister, and then his parents. Mm-hmm. And his sister is this wonderful girl, good student, good, but her parents have no time or energy mm-hmm. to spend on her because they have to deal with her brother. So she feels like she's never paid attention. Can you to identify the, the strengths and detriments that you got from each of your parents? I hope they don't listen to this. <laughs> no, I mean, I think... Mine pump small, don't worry. I think my mom, my mom, like, like I just said, she taught me to hustle and she taught me, she is like a badass. Like everybody is afraid of her in the best way she speaks her mind and she does not apologize for who she is that's cool. and that's where i get it from that's why we butt heads a lot like we're really mm-hmm. similar with mm-hmm. that um so yeah i think with we'll this, count that as a strength yeah, yeah. I, I consider that a strength right, but it's strength. also the weakness it's also working too hard and driving yourself into mm-hmm. the ground and i tell sure. her now it's like you know you need to leave the office Run earlier off the like, a little bit yeah, yeah. and like because i have the same issue i can't turn off like mm-hmm. I can't turn off and she just works too hard. And I think also is just v- so hyper-focused on what she's doing that it ends up being selfish mm-hmm. and not meaning to be, but she's just so hyper-focused and like what's going on right now, like what's dealing in my life, like not considering what's happening with other people. And that's something I try to really be cognizant of because I know I can easily fall in that trap because mm-hmm. I'm just, my brain's mm-hmm. buzzing. Um, I think my dad, well, I don't, I mean, I have his like sense of humor, um, like the dryness, the sar- the sarcasm and also the same thing. Like he, he will just say what he thinks and he says some pretty controversial things <laughs> that he doesn't think twice about. And I get that from him too. Um, and he, He's a really hard worker as well. I think that's why they were drawn to each other, you know, but I think he's just, he's so stubborn that he can never see the other perspective. And I think that this whole experience, I was always like that too. I was always right. Like I was always right. And this whole experience I went through taught me, like, I don't want to have that trait anymore. And it's like, I, I know what I know and I'm very open about I'm not the expert on this. I don't know this. Like, teach me more. Like, I am I have so much to learn from so many smart people. And, like, I want to learn more and more. And there's so many people who are so much more intelligent than me. And, like, that's great. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room ever because how am I going to grow? Versus, like, you know, I think that sometimes he gets caught in this trap. Like, he is, he's always the smartest one in the room. And, like, you're not going to grow that way. You know, you're not going to learn from other people. That's a that's the trait that I recognized in you when we first met because I knew your background with UCLA. I knew that what you've been doing with nutrition. I knew that you understand all the conversations that we've had on Mind Pump. But what I was most impressed with was someone of your age not trying to impress us or try and be act like you're smarter or as smart right. by talking like that. A lot of times when I meet somebody who's younger, really, really intelligent too. Mm-hmm they feel this need to like it's the overcompensate. Yes. Overcompensate for it. And 
uh, it's, it's super common. I mean, it's mm-hmm. I, I remember being that guy for a very long time too, always yep. trying to prove how smart I was, proved everybody like that, and took me a long time to let go of that and work through that insecurity. It's very common when I meet other really intelligent young minds. Uh, I didn't get that with you at all. I was really impressed with, you know, the fact that you. There's a lot of things that we would be talking about that you were actually very well read on and you didn't feel the need yeah, to, you didn't have to overstep, you right. know, you could listen and, and, and let us kind of run through the thought, which is, that's rare actually. No, no. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Very rare. Well, I try to be like, I really like I try to be very conscious of it because mm-hmm. I know how easy it is. Cause I think, I mean, I experienced it a lot. Like the, the ageism thing, you know, I'm told, well, you're only 19 or 20 and I'm the doctor and I know, and I just want to scream, no, you don't, you know? So it's hard to fight. It is hard to fight that urge. And I know a lot of people my age feel that way. Mm. But there, you know, there's always something to learn from anybody you're with. Yep. Well, that's yeah. awesome. We are we are super pleased to have you here. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much for inviting me. Yeah. yeah. One of our, one of our favorite so people. Yeah. I don't think it'll be the last time either, man. I'm really nope. excited. No. We got to do some more stuff not. with you. Yeah, yeah. No, I love hanging out with you guys. So uh, real quick, we're, uh, run down all the places these, I mean, we're going to do a whole intro for you, but all the places these guys can find you because <laughs> I know you got the different Instagrams, you got the t- two podcasts, yeah. you got the blog going. So my blog is addicted to lovely.com and my podcast one is actually adultish which is on itunes or actually adultish.com my other podcast is straight up paleo.com or itunes straight up paleo and on stitcher which you guys are on now too awesome yeah. good work and, <laughs> and spotify yeah so that's pretty much where you can find me and on instagram addicted underscore to underscore lovely because some person took it without underscores and, and next I can't time get we them you. off. Yeah. yeah. Next time we see you, it'll be another thing. Right? Oh yeah, I yeah. hope so. I'm always I'm always <laughs> popping up everywhere. I always tell people, I'm like, I'm not hard to find. Like, just search me. Just search just me. A so, yeah. Yeah, I was saying the same thing. I feel like an asshole though. Just Google me. Yeah. yeah. Google just me, Google bro. me. <laughs> it's easier. Don't Google me. You'll see some want that. Not the images anyway. Yeah. Excellent. All right, check it out. Go to YouTube, subscribe to Mind Pump TV. We post new videos all the time. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.